the news results. On a Saturday morning, it's time for some of our Sunday night. Yeah. All right, it is Saturday morning indeed, and we are just a little bit of time away from money in the bank this afternoon. We're going to talk about that as part of it in the ran down right here at Wrestling Rants as well as some industry news from AEW and some stuff from New Japan. So let's get into it. Let's talk about Money in the Bank, which we will have a mega rant on that, probably on, I'm thinking Monday, probably Monday morning, we're doing a mega rant on that. Also this weekend, probably tomorrow, in Mega Rant on the Impact Down Under Tour, there was two events on a Friday and Saturday. I have not seen a single moment of any of these shows, but I do have them on the queue, ready to view, coming up probably tonight into tomorrow. So be looking for that as well this weekend. And then we move in next week. We talked about it already many times in different rants, but on July 4th, a special multi-rant top 10 takes looking back at everything from 2023 so far we're going to be doing four special top 10 take rants on july 4th the best matches so far 2023 the best moments 2023 the best MVPs of 2023 and the best mega events of 2023 so far. All right, let's get into things here on Land the Ramp Down. Let's first and foremost do a little bit of money in the bank predictions from London this afternoon. If any of you watched SmackDown last night, you're going to be uh, very aware of how hot this crowd is going to be at the same place as they had SmackDown last night, the O2 Arena. Very hot crowd. Pretty good show. Thought uh, particularly the angle at the end with the bloodline was strong as again as usual. But let's get into the predictions. And let's not waste any more time here. Let's talk about everything on the card. Seven matches total. Uh, Jam-packed, sold-out crowd for this show. First actual major WWE pay-per-view since SummerSlam 1992. It's been a real long time since London has had a big WWE event. Here we are. Uh, let's talk about first, I guess, the Bloodline tag with Roman Reigns, Solus Koa against the Usos. I thought this was going to be main event. I thought this would be no question that this would be main event, but as it is, uh, last night on SmackDown, we got the announcement that of all matches, the Cody Rhodes and Dominic Mysterio match is going to be the main event. I'm a bit flabbergasted and blown away by that. I don't know why particularly they're putting that as the main. I guess they're expecting a big crowd reaction for Dominic and Cody, I guess. But to me, that comes off like that should be maybe the opener, actually, of this pay-per-view. My personal feeling on it. I know both guys are hot with the crowd, but I think that's more reason to open the show with that match. That does not scream main event on any level whatsoever. And this will be the first main event Dominic Mysterio actually... Um, Main event at a pay-per-view. This is the first for him and in all places. London, England, on a big stage like this. Wow. Uh, I guess let's talk about Cody and Dom first, since that is the main event now. Announced by WWE. Uh, let's talk about betting odds this time around, too, in the predictions. I got some betting odds for these matches. And for the Cody and Dom match, uh, Cody is a 7-1 to favorite. So pretty strong. I think it's pretty clear Cody's going to go over in this match unless there's some sort of weird shenanigans. I, I almost feel like there has to be something big they have planned to be putting this as main event. Um, I would certainly not think Cody is going to lose here. But I, I don't know. I just wonder if there's like a Brock Lesnar appearance perhaps causing some ruckus to set up another match with Cody at SummerSlam. 
That's the only thing I can think of here that may potentially be uh, a skew or give reason why this is the main event. So I will predict Brock Lesnar run in, but I will predict a Cody Rhodes win here. Lesnar shows up after Rhodes wins, lays him out one more time, and then that's how we end the pay for me. That's my thought on that one. Uh, the other match, which I just said, I thought would have been main event, should have been main event, is the Bloodline Tag. I'm going to go with the Usos on this one, judging by the story that was told last night on the SmackDown episode where the Usos were pretty much saying Solo, Solo Sokoa is their new tribal chief. That put a wedge with Sokoa and Reigns that could easily completely explode in this match and lead to not only the Usos beating Roman Reigns when Solo Sokoa perhaps walks out on Reigns in this match. That's the first step. Second step is that perhaps we may have some sort of match at SummerSlam may end up being a fatal four-way match for the uh, Roman Reigns Unified Championships. We'll, we'll see where they go with this, but that's my thought. Pieces are going to win this. Sokoa is going to have issue with Reigns in this match. He's going to walk out on Reigns. Reigns is going to take the fall on the Usos. Probably Jey Uso will be the guy to pin Roman. And then that leads to either one of two scenarios. At, when you, or at SummerSlam, we get Jey Uso against Roman, or we get some sort of fatal four-way match between all of these guys. I kind of think that may be down the road a little further. It just depends how quickly they're ready to move on the storyline here. But one thing is for sure, I think the Usos are going over. Odds makers actually have Roman and Solo slightly... Uh, in the in the uh, driver's seat on the betting odds, but not by much. So that's the industry saying that it's hard to say which way this is going to go internally. I think you are going to win, though. We'll see. Seth Rollins, Finn Balor for the World Heavyweight Championship. I'm going to go Rollins. Rollins is actually a 20 to 1 favorite here. I think it should be a solid match, but I for sure think Rollins is going over here, no question. Other matches on the undercard, Gunther and Riddle for the Intercontinental Championship. Uh, Gunther is a 20-20 odds. On this one, I will go Gunther for sure. Women's Tag title match, Ronda Rousey, Shayna Baszler against Raquel Rodriguez and Liv Morgan. 100-1 odds for Rousey and Baszler. That is wild. I will go with the heels on this one, Rousey and Baszler for the win. And then to close off the show, we got the Money in the Bank matches for the men and the women. Let's first talk about the women. We have Trish Stratus, Becky Lynch, Selena Vega, Zoe Stark, and then the two members of Damage Control, Bailey and EO Sky. We saw Bailey defeat shot seat to re continue to keep that spot in the Money in the Bank match. And then on top of it, her and EO Sky cut part of Shotzi's hair last night. I would think Shotzi's looking for revenge in this one and probably going to interfere in this match, perhaps to cost Bailey part of the match win. And then I think because of that, perhaps Elo Sky will take advantage of maybe Shotzi costing Bailey the money in the bank spot. She'll take her off that ladder near the end. Elo Sky perhaps takes advantage of that fact, climbs the ladder, gets the win. And then that it creates this wedge between Bailey and Neil Sky. Um, I, I, I could definitely see that happen. I think that's the most probable scenario here of all the the uh, people in this match, all the ladies. I think Neil Sky is probably going to win this. In fact, Sky is a six to one odds in the bet makers. So I I'm pretty confident in this one that Neil Sky is going to win. It's going to be a definite elevation for her. Skyrocketed her as a singles competitor on the main roster, which hasn't happened yet. So all signs point to that. I think as a, another possibility, uh, kind of a rabbit in the hat kind of thing, where they may pull a trick on all of us, and maybe they're going to have somebody like Selena Vega win the money in the bank in a bit shocker. I think definitely see that, or even in 
a Zoe Stark, perhaps, also getting that nod. So we'll see what they go, but I am going to heel sky for this one. And then probably the most controversial match with the uh, questionable who's going over in this match, the men's money in the bank. We got Damian Priest, we got Santos Escobar, we got Shinsuke Nakamura, we got Butch, we got Ricochet, Logan Paul, and LA Knight, who was massively over in the London crowd last night in the O2. Wow. All logic points to LA Knight getting the briefcase. He's hot. The people are clamoring for him. He got kind of fucked over at WrestleMania. All these things are reasons to give LA Knight the money in the bank. And I would love it to see him get that opportunity. But unfortunately, I think with the inclusion of Logan Paul into this match, as it happened, I think this is an internal struggle here with perhaps Vince McMahon and Triple H creatively. My thought is, without reading officially on this, but I have heard some reports this week that there was an internal push for Logan Paul to win the Money in the Bank. Triple H has been kind of against that internally. I would think Triple H is all about LA Knight going over. I think Vince McMahon may be trying to get his mitts in this finish and wants Logan Paul to go over. <laughs> At the end of the day, he was the real decision maker here. We know it's Vince and still has the power. Unfortunately, we've seen and heard a lot of changes on Raw and SmackDown in the last week or two here, and that has been Vince McMahon's doing. Matches dropped that were announced, some changes on Raw that happened. Just a lot of stuff that points in the direction of Vince McMahon getting more creative power here. So I think, unfortunately, I don't agree with the decision, but judging by the promo last night as well, with Logan Paul mentioning his issues with Rollins from the past and Roman Reigns and how he could potentially use the money in the bank to cash in on either one of those guys, I think all logic is Logan Paul is winning the money in the bank this year, folks. Although, I would love to see LA Knight win it, no doubt. Knight is actually a 3-1 to one odds maker uh, number here, but it's, that's a not very high odds either. So that shows the internal strike bravely with the WWE. Uh, who exactly to put over here? And I think, I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be Logan Paul getting that men's money in the bank. We will see what happens. Keep in mind, with the men's money in the bank, I think... It's a, almost 100% that it has been cashed in most cases. But maybe that's the women's. I think that's the women's, actually. The men's are a little bit, the odds are a little different. That's why we've had Damien Sandow. We've had uh, Cena who didn't cash it in. There's been others, including, I believe, uh, wasn't it just last year, where um, Austin Fury actually wasn't able to cash in the money in the bank, the U.S. title, but then did win the U.S. title uh, after another opportunity. All right, let's get into some AEW industry news on the rating side. Uh, just a quick note that there's been some concerning numbers for both Collision and Dynamite this past week. Might just have to do with oversaturation, with the pay-per-view happening and all these type of things, but first and foremost, second week of Collision uh, had a 21% drop to 595,000 viewers total, a 0.21 in the demo of the, uh, of the 18 to 49, which is the important demo that uh, industry executives look at. Kind of a low demo number. Um, that was a 37% drop in the demo from last week as well. Now, this number, 595 or 590, yeah, 595,000 kind of where um, industry executives within Warner Brothers were kind of looking for for collision around the five to six hundred a per week. So we'll see if that holds up. Now if it drops week to week here, and I think it has a chance to drop tonight because it's a taped collision and it's going to be basically right after Money in the Bank happens. I think it's very possible we're going to see a dip for the third week. But the question is, uh, maybe 6th, 7th, 8th week, where is it going to kind of sit? 
And where is it going to kind of average out? Time will tell on that. Dynamite also had uh, a concerning number, particularly in the 18 to 49 demo. The lowest demo number in something like three years, a .24. That's very low. Uh, Collision's demo almost beat that. So that is concerning. That was a 30% drop just from last week's Dynamite. So something to keep an eye on as well. The collision being added, it may affect Dynamite's number overall here. And we're going to see what happens as time goes on. Overall, Dynamite number was it was okay. It was 809,000 viewers total. Wasn't terrible. Stayed in that 800 range, but um, that demo number is definitely a concern within AEW and Warner Brothers. All right, let's get into New Japan news. Uh, some news came out overseas that the uh, new third iteration of the Three Musketeers have been kind of formed internally within New Japan, and that is Shota Umino, Yoda Suji, and Ren Narita. Now, if you know anything about New Japan, this has been kind of an era, different eras of New Japan have showcased and kind of uh, internally pushed three main guys as kind of the, I guess when you think of like the four pillars of AEW, this is like the three pillars of New Japan in its current era. And in fact, this era is called the Rewa era. And these are the three musketeers of this era, the guys that they're looking to elevate and main event and be the next Tanahashi's, the next Keiichi Muto's, the next Shinsuke Nakamura's, so to speak. Um, looking back in history, the first group of the three musketeers was Keiichi Muto, Masahiro Chono, and Shinya Hashimoto from way back in the day in the 90s. Then the second group came around in the 2000s, and that was Tanahashi, Nakamura, and Katsuhiro Shibata, and now here we are on the third leg of the third era of New Japan with the three musketeers, Umino, Suji, and Renrita. So be on the lookout for these three guys. They're gonna be pushing these two, or these three, to the moon. You've already seen Yoda Suji getting some definite shine in there against Sonata recently, looking like a million bucks. I would not even be shocked. If Yoda Suji is the next guy to become the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion uh, down the road, this time will tell on that, but that's where we are right now. The new Three Musketeers have been set by New Japan, and there they are. And we close off this way in the ramp down with a look at some more big events coming up next week. Independence Day from New Japan Strong, the New Japan Strong roster is coming to Japan in Cork and Hall for July 4th and July 5th. So I'm hoping to check out these shows pretty quickly since I have some time off this week with the holiday. Um, let's just look at the top of both of these cards for July 4th and July 5th. Let's get a little bit of maybe predictions on my end as well. Uh, July 4th, we have a women's tag that kind of leads into July 5th as well, but Willow Nightingale is coming over. She's the New Japan Strong Women's Champion, as we know. She's going to team with Momo Kobo, who was in that little mini tournament in L.A. for the Strong Women's Championship and looking great in there. I believe she even wrestled Willow in that round in L.A. And they're going to take on uh, Tekla from Stardom, I'm presuming. I'm not sure of that name. I've never heard that that competitor and Julia, the stardom champion, who had issued a challenge to Willow Nightingale for that New Japan Strong Women's Championship, and we're going to see that on the second night here. Um, as far as this match goes, I will go Willow and Momo Kogo, just as a quick prediction on that. Um, we also have two matches, this is kind of unique, um, two teams taking on each other both nights for two separate titles. That is the team of Bishamon, Hiroki Goto, Hiroshi Hashi, the current New Japan Strong and IWGP Tag Champions against Gabriel Kidd and Alex Coughlin, the Bullet Club. So on the fourth, this is for the New Japan Strong Tag Championships. On the fifth, it will be for the IWGP Tag Championships. 
I'm gonna go Kid and Coughlin on the fourth here for the New Japan Strong Tag Championships because then they could come back to the United States and defend them more and get over more being the champions. I think that makes sense that they go in this direction with it. Also having Kid and Coughlin beat Bishamon on night one gives a little bit of drama leading into night two. Can they defeat Bishamon a second time on July 5th? So, going with Kid and Coughlin on this one for July 4th. Also, the Junior Tag Championships on the IWGP side are on the line. Francisco Akira, TJP against uh, Drew and Maloney and Clark Connors of the Bullet Club. Again, I can see a title change here. They're just trying to get these guys elevated in Bullet Club, and this would be a perfect opportunity to do it. I'm going to go Connors and Maloney, new Junior Champions on this one. And then the main event of July 4th is a no disqualification match with John Moxley and Homicide against El Desperado and the ultimate death match king, June Kasai, coming in on this one. And this is going to be certainly a fucking crazy match with Kasai in there, with Moxley. Homicide has history in death match stuff and hardcore matches. Ooh, this could be something, no doubt about it. Um, I'm going to go Desperado and June Kasai on this one. I'm really looking forward to this match. This is going to be wild. Then we go to July 5th. Top four matches on July 5th. We got Little Nightdale against Julia for the New Japan Strong Women's Championship. I'm going to go Willow Nightdale on this one. I think this is going to be a fun match to check out. Also, Bishamon once again against Gabriel Kidd, Alex Coughlin. I'm going to go Bishamon on this one. This is for the IWGP Tag Championships. So I think Bishamon will keep those titles. They'll uh, lose the, the uh, New Japan Strong titles the first night, but they're going to retain those titles the second night, I think. Kenta will defend the Strong Championship against Eddie Kingston on July 5th. I can actually go with Eddie Kingston winning the New Japan Strong uh, title. I think that would give a bit of a rub for him leading into the G1 as well. I like that idea. And they could defend it a lot on AEW programming down the road. Then the main event is going to be a wild one. They're calling it a final death match of some sort. I'm, I don't know what that means exactly other than... Maybe this is going to be a, a really wild death match between John Moxley and El Desperado. I'm going to go Moxley on this one. Uh, if you recall, they had a match last year that was pretty fucking insane. You should check that out. It's on the New Japan YouTube for free if you haven't. I'm really looking forward to this one, though. Moxley going over Desperado on July 5th. And, of course, we will be having a mega rant on these events. Probably a back-to-back -back, uh, jam-packed Mega Rant where we cover both of them in one big Mega Rant. All right, everybody, enjoy Money in the Bank. Come back here for a Mega Rant very soon, as well as that Impact Down Under Tour Mega Rant to look forward to. And we got on July 4th, don't forget, four, count four, top ten takes looking back at 2023. All right, see you right back here later this weekend, right here, right on my right.